What's up guys, it's Try Back again here bringing another video. So we're going to be doing uh, the fourth one uh, today. Now I wasn't sure exactly if I was going to be doing this review or not because this episode was, um, it was okay I guess. Uh, there was a little bit of, uh, you know, excitement in it with the, uh, you know, sort of like a drama builder episode um, with some different things going on uh, in the story, but there wasn't a whole lot in the way of zombie action. There wasn't a whole lot in the way of, uh, you know, uh, there was only one zombie in the whole episode. Um, literally only one. Like that's... I think this might be the first episode we've seen where there was literally only one zombie in the entire thing. Um, which, that kind of sucks. Um, I like it better when they mix in sort of half of the, uh, you know, the character building parts and the pressure cooker parts with, um, you know, some action here and there. Uh, and, you know, people can say, oh, well, you know, the story's about the character. It's a story about the character. It's about the characters. It's about the characters. Okay, you know, if I wanted to just watch a show 100% just about the characters, then I, you know, and, and all this, you know, this person's pregnant from, you know, from this, or, you know, and whose is it, and yada, 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 and all this stuff, then I'd go watch Days of Our Lives, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, that's just the way I feel about it. Uh, it is interesting to, to hear and to see how the characters react, um, you know, in these circumstances, which I agree to that extent. It is interesting to see the character development in this situation because of the world they live in, because of the environment. Um, that's why it's interesting. Otherwise, like I said, it'd just be like you know, Days of Our Lives or some freaking soap opera like that. Um, that comparison makes sense after watching this episode uh, for most of you. Um, by the way, I'm going to mention that this will contain spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. You can find it on ISO Hunt. Search for it by the name, Cherokee Rose. And you'll find it, download the torrent, watch it, you know, all that good stuff. Um, then come on back and watch this review. So so this was um, a slower episode. You know, like I said, uh, not a whole lot of action at all. Uh, not a whole lot of suspense. A little bit when Daryl was kind of going into that, uh, you know, that house and stuff like that. And that's kind of the part that where I'd like to add that... Um, they really should have had something happen there. You know what I mean? Something should have happened. There should have been some action somewhere, you know, in there, mixed in. It, it could have worked. And it really feels like to me they're starting to, you know, reduce the amount of zombies and the amount of action stuff that's going on with that to keep the budget down. You know, I've done a video talking about Frank Darabont being let go from the show, you know, a while ago. Go check that out if you want. He was the director, if you guys don't know. Uh, he's the guy who kind of, you know, uh, pioneered this whole thing. And you know, got this television show going, really, the ball rolling on this, and really uh, has made it so great. And he basically, the problem was, was he had a, he got into a dispute with AMC because AMC gave him less funding than the first season to do more than twice as many episodes. If you guys don't know, the first season was six episodes, and the budget was bigger than the second season, which is 13 episodes. So I think we're going to see a lot of episodes like this one, where there's one zombie, maybe two, you know, and just, just not a whole lot going on, you know, like um, character development and, you know, interactions between the characters and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, that's all well and good here and there. I just, I want it to be well balanced, um, well balanced out. Okay, that's enough about that. I won't talk any more about, uh, about the lack of uh, suspense and zombies in action in this episode. Other than, uh, than that, um, the character interactions were good. I liked at the beginning where, where Shane, you know, um, uh, Patricia's asking Shane to sort of speak on behalf of Otis and, and you know, Shane kind of, is taken back by it, and then he kind of, you know, goes ahead and, uh, you know, talks about it and makes him out to kind of look like a hero. That was kind of cool to see that, um, you know, because I always liked, uh, you know, that was really interesting, and um, on the last episode, a lot of people were, you know, uh, in my in my review, were talking about, you know, whether or not Shane made the right decision or the wrong decision, and I think most people agree that, you know, he probably shouldn't have done that. But, um, you know, there were other ways to do it. Maybe he should have shot him in the head. Maybe he should have, you know, there was other things he could have maybe tried to do uh, instead. But, um, so so there was that. And then going on from there, there was some other stuff with uh, Daryl looking for Sophia again. And I'm kind of like, you know, at this point, I'm kind of like, you know, how many episodes have she has she been missing for? Three whole episodes include, like four, if you include the episode where she went missing and that they've been looking for um I think, I think that's getting long in the tooth. Either find her or don't find her. You know what I mean? Um, either get on with that, get that over with, get that wrapped up, or forget about it. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I'd like to see them find her quick, you know, soon, hopefully, in the next episode. I don't want to see many more episodes go by where they're still looking for Sophia. I'll just be like, oh, my God, you're still doing this? You know, so it's, just, uh, it's just boring. 
I'm not saying that if that happened, I wouldn't go looking, or, you know, if I was in a group, that we wouldn't go looking. It's just that this is a fictional TV show, and I don't want to see story arcs like that carry on for too long. Um, so that's the part about Sophia, you know, Daryl with the rose and that kind of stuff, and what he says to Sophia's mom is, is decent, you know, that's all kind of cool, kind of shows a different side to, uh, to Daryl's character, uh, aside from just, you know, the badass uh, Wolverine tracker side that he's got uh, with the crossbow. Um, and then, of course, you've got the zombie in the well. So the zombie in the well was kind of a little interesting, I guess. Uh, I thought it was funny when his body split in half and it just, you know, all went in the water. But the thing is, is that, you know, he's bleeding. Like, it's a zombie. He's bleeding all over the place. You can see. If you look at him, you're like, okay, you look down at him, he's bleeding. If they're saying, oh, we need water, whatever. Well, maybe they forget that in the first episode of the season, there was a truck full of distilled water on the highway. And Shane went back there later on in this episode. So why didn't he just say, you know, shoot the damn thing? And I'll go back and get this truck full of distilled water and bring it here. <laughs> you know, so that to me is like, like, did they forget that there's all this water on the highway? If you guys remember, you know, he breaks open, the, he opens the back, and he, you know, breaks open this thing of water. There's a whole freaking truck full of distilled water there. All he would have to do is hop in and you know, grab it and take it back. That's it. Uh, so that was kind of silly how they had Glenn go down. So I was like, this is just nonsense. You know, I mean, why would you do that? Like, it's just stupid. You know, uh, with this <laughs> big fat zombie, swimmer zombie in the water. So that was kind of, I, I don't know, whatever. Um, no other comments on that, just the fact that there was water on the highway. Don't know why they didn't just go get that. Uh, moving on from there, then, we've got uh, the part with uh, Maggie, who's Herschel's daughter, and Glenn. Of course, that's cool. Uh, same as in the comic book, you know, we knew that, that was kind of going to happen. And, um, you know, they, they kind of surprised me. The show kind of, you know, kind of here and there, it makes me think at some points that it's going just like the comic book did, and then at other points it... it you know, it's very different, the fact that Shane's still here and all the stuff's going on. So, you know, every time you see it kind of go back to how it was in the comic book and, you know, stay on that path is kind of uh, it's kind of interesting. You know, I kind of want to see them just go a totally different path, almost completely. Like, I'd like to see maybe uh, Andrea and Daryl, or Andrea and Dale not get together, and maybe Andrea and Shane or something like that. You know, just some different stuff to keep it going along or have some of the members of the group split off. Um, of the group, you know, like Shane leave or something, like this kind of stuff, you know. I think that that's all very interesting and uh, keeps it really fresh because if it's, if it's the same as the comic book, it is sort of like, you know, just like, oh, well, we already knew that. Like the reveal in this episode at the end, spoiler, you know, um, Lori's pregnant uh, with Shane's kid, obviously. I think Rick already knows about that because I think Jenner told him in the first season. Probably he did. Um, so he already knows and everything, and um, so she knows for sure now. And, um, you know, that's going to just be like a pressure cooker there in the group and cause more problems between Shane and Rick. And maybe at the season finale will be Shane's at last episode. Or maybe, like I said, Shane will go his own way. I'd kind of like to see Shane go his own way and just see how that, uh, how that goes down. That would be kind of interesting. Um, other than that, what else was there in this episode? Oh, the conversation between Herschel and Rick. Um, kind of interesting, kind of cool to hear some of Herschel's backstory that we didn't really you know hear about in the comic book um you know we didn't really know that he had problems with his dad at least it's been a little while since i read the comics but i'm pretty sure herschel never mentioned his father in the comic books even once so that's a nice little addition a little more details and the fact that he's you know mentioning that he will consider allowing them to stay where in the comic book he was like basically like no you know so that's kind of neat um that part and Another thing, I'm not sure if Herschel's sons, if Herschel has sons in the TV show. You see, in the comic book, he had a whole bunch of sons. How many sons did he have? At least two or three, maybe four, I forget. Two or three sons. And in, in the um, the TV show, I haven't seen one of them. Uh, maybe it was just me, but I haven't seen a single son there. Um, now, when they were all standing around, they were doing Otis's thing. I thought I might have saw a couple extra people, but it was really quick, and you know, and then it cut to commercials or whatever. So I didn't really, I didn't really get a whole idea of whether or not there was, you know, his sons there and that kind of stuff. If he even has them in the TV show, maybe he doesn't even. I don't even know. I mean, I guess we'll have to see how that all works out. Um, what else is there to say about this episode? Oh yeah, rating. This episode, I'm going to give this uh, a six out of ten. This is the lowest, one of the lowest uh, scores I've given for an episode of The Walking Dead since the first season. Um, it's not a bad episode per se. It's just that I think I don't want the show to forget what the show is. Okay, I don't want it to forget what it is. It's a it's a character driven drama. Okay, suspense horror based in a zombie apocalypse based world. I don't want to see episodes where there's only one zombie. And I'm sorry, some of you may feel different, but I don't want to see that. I don't want to see. That. I want at least you got to have at least five or ten zombies in every episode. 
Other than if that doesn't happen, I'm like, okay, this is starting to get bad, you know. Right at this point is where Frank Darabont left, so I guess we'll see if the rest of the season is like this. I hope it's not. I mean, we had such a good episode last episode with Shane and everything that happened with that. This episode, I don't want to say it was a letdown because there was the reveal with Laurie, so a lot of people who haven't read the comic book would find that interesting. But, you know, in other ways it was kind of a letdown. You know, it wasn't as good as the previous uh, episodes of the season. It was more like the second episode where just there was a lot of uh, character development but nothing really major happened aside from the pregnancy thing which um, so I guess that's pretty much all there is to say I mean I'm trying guys I'm trying to think of anything else because like this episode there just wasn't a whole lot that happened in it so I guess I'll wrap it up here with saying that uh, I hope that this isn't because of the budget cuts and uh, you know AMC you know if, if the rest of the season is going to be like this and luckily we get a third season don't cut the budget again for the third season because I want to see zombies, man. I want to see lots of zombies, okay? Mix in all the character development, great. Lots of zombies. Okay, I'm repeating myself now. See you guys. That's it. Later. Peace.